so it's about time uh, let's start with the proceedings uh, hello all a very good evening to everyone uh, thank you for joining uh, today's webinar let me introduce myself first i'm vaishnavi thakur a master student at the university of tokyo in the department of electrical engineering and information systems i will be the facilitator for today's webinar and i welcome you all so today's webinar is about study and work in japan it aims to promote education in japan by motivating young students to pursue their higher studies the university of tokyo india office is organizing these sessions where experts from different universities across japan will be providing the information and guidance on various programs that are being offered in the universities japan has the third largest economy in the world it has a huge demand for skilled professionals and not to forget the fact that it has the highest employment rate among the other developed g7 nations but we still see that many students choose western countries for their higher education uh we believe that it is mainly because of the lack of awareness of uh, wonderful opportunities that are being offered here and also because of various misconceptions like japanese language requirements tuition fees living expenses etc these webinars aim to bridge that gap and provide answers to these questions so uh, if you have any further queries uh, please shoot your answers in the q and a portal Uh, the agenda for today is as follows um uh, first we'll have a brief overview of the sessions by ms sakshi who is a program assistant of the university of tokyo india office it is followed by a presentation of study and work life in japan by mr dhiraj joshi a student of the university of tokyo and then we have presentations by representatives of toyo university ritsumeikan asia pacific university and kanazawa university the total time of presentation by universities is 20 minutes which is followed by a q and a session of 5 minutes so before proceeding into the webinar i would like to request all panelists to turn off their audio and video when you are not presenting Also please share your university details in the chat box after your presentation. Attendees you are requested to post your questions in the Q&A portal and not in the chat box. So uh, without any further ado uh, let's begin the webinar. Uh, I would like to invite Ms Sakshi the program assistant of the University of Tokyo India office to share her thoughts. Over to you Ms Sakshi. Uh, thank you, Ms. Tagore. Thank you for the introduction. So, um, good afternoon, uh, Konchiwa. Namaste, everyone. Uh, my name is Sakshi Roy, and this program is hosted by the University of Tokyo India Office and brought to you by MEX, the Ministry of Education, Culture, Sports, Science, and Technology in Japan. So, um, I would like to welcome all of the experts we have from uh, world-class Japanese universities and our amazing attendees. Thank you for taking out time to participate in this webinar. So before start uh, let me give you a brief introduction about our office our office is a part of studying uh, japan global network project in southwest asia by mex and we provide comprehensive information on japanese universities um we organize education fairs and seminars throughout india as well so today uh, we are going to have our 17th webinar series of study and work in japan and all these webinars are basically designed to introduce you to some of the best japanese universities and we will be discussing uh, the various program offerings and opportunities to study and work in japan in our online webinars so there will be three different japanese universities representing in each session national public and private universities all the universities are basically uh, focusing to introduce english based programs that are offered by them so i'll tell you that japan has approximately 700 plus universities um as well as specialized vocational institutions so if you consider japan as your study destination you have so many options to choose from world class universities the academic options for international students are nearly boundless in japan so after graduating from japanese universities you will be truly valuable uh, on the job market not only in japan but in the other countries as well so i request uh, all of our uh, 
attendees to please stay tuned uh, with us till the end of the session and join our future webinars to learn about world's renowned Japanese universities and their offerings. Um, lastly, I recommend all of our attendees to please uh, listen to each and every presentation very carefully and please note down the contact addresses of respective universities. And then you can, you know, directly contact them uh, in case if you have uh, any questions. So thank you very much for paying attention. Please enjoy today's session and don't forget to register and join us uh, for our next exciting uh, session tomorrow at 1 p.m. IST. So we hope uh, you will enjoy the experience and receive a beneficial information from our webinars. Thank you very much once again for attending our webinar. Thank, uh, over to you, Vaishnavi San. Uh, thank you, Sakshi. There were some uh, valuable words. Uh, next, I'll share the agenda screen. Uh, now we have uh, Mr. Dheeraj Joshi, who is a master's student at the University of Tokyo. He'll give you a brief overview of study and work life in Japan. Over to you, Mr. Yes. Is my screen visible, Ms. Thakur? Uh, yes, it is. Okay. Uh, hello, everyone. I'm Dheeraj Joshi. I'm a master's student at the Department of Civil Engineering in the University of Tokyo. I will give an overview why Japan is a rising magnet for foreign talent for study and work life in Japan. So Japan has basically 47 prefectures and which can be equated to states, which we call in Asian countries. And Japanese economy is the third uh, largest in the world. And Japan being a member of G7 countries, its economy is mainly propelled by automobile industries, electronics industries, and robotics. And as per Global Peace Index, Japan is a very safe place to live with very low crime rate and is reckoned as a country to live with peace of mind, especially for international students who are coming here, leaving their environment, home environment, and settling here. And why this is a peaceful country and what are the other associated benefits? Like you can see Shinkansen, the bullet trains, as they are properly called, is a technological marvel. And not only Shinkansen, other transport modes are very comfortable and punctual. And Japan provides an international cuisine options like Indian, Chinese, European. And besides the main concern of the students and parents is regarding the health of their child. So here in Japan, the national health insurance system takes care of such all such apprehensions by catering to 70% of the medical expenses being paid by the government in lieu of annual nominal premium of around 12,000 yen. And Japan is a country which offers the modern cityscape with, uh, which is coexisting with ancient cultural heritage. So Japanese system can be, uh, university system can be divided into three categories, national, public, and private. And the other concern of the students, as the was pointed out by Ms. Thakur earlier, the, is regarding to the openness of Japan to English speaking students, which is taken care here after understanding the uh, diverse and comprehensive courses which are offered in English, wherein around 90 courses in undergraduate in 40 universities are offered in English and 160 postgraduate courses in 51 universities are offered in English. The facilities offered to students are unparalleled and the best in the world. We are offering like sophisticated libraries, which are offering excellent collection of books, journals, digital resources like e-journals, e-books, and research labs are unique in nature, where students learn, uh, learn practical skills through engineered approach and positive feedbacks on constant basis from lab members and professors. So a student's launch allows for interactive discussions for creation of new ideas and implementation. University also offers is for sports enthusiasts like uh, furnished gymnasiums and dormitories offers peaceful living environment for well-balanced academic and personal lifestyle. So here you can see, I'm just uh, giving a comparison of the tuition fees. It is around five times cheaper as compared to US and uh, public universities and in private universities, it is around three times cheaper. And the living expensive, they are easily catered to by various scholarships that are provided here like Max, just so local government scholarships, which we'll be providing further later on in the link in the chat box. So what are the job opportunities in Japan? Average salary is around 3.9 million yen, which is approximately 28 lakhs uh, Indian rupees per year. And it has the lowest unemployment rate uh, as per status, uh, uh, statistics of 2020. And the leading international Japanese companies are like Canon, 
Nintendo, Toyota, Uniqlo, Toshiba, Mitsubishi, which are world renowned. And you are also having like offering of global companies which are operating in Japan, like Amazon, Google, Facebook, Bosch, Apple. And why it is a, such a great opportunity here? Because there are exciting internship, part-time job, and long-term employment opportunities offered here. And why is it so? Because visa procurement is an easy process. The students after graduation can upgrade their student visa to working visa in Japan on the basis of point-based system, which is easily available for the highly skilled foreign professionals. So why Japan? Basically, excellent level of higher education. It is a world leader in science and technology low tuition fees as compared to Europe and US, generous scholarship from government, and there are a plethora of Japanese companies to recruit international students. I'm just sharing one example, like in the uh, Shinkansen project that is being undertaken in India, similar such projects are also being taken by Japanese uh, government ODA, official development assistance in like Vietnam and other countries. And this creates a demand for diverse and multicultural workforce to work in Japanese and in such other companies which are being uh, floated. So there is a very much high need for uh, skilled labor force. So which case, which is like taken care in through such programs. So I had a great learning experience in Japan as this sojourn has offered me not only pursue my uh, academic interests, but also my personal interests. Like I had a uh, really great uh, keen interest in learning karate and here I joined it. Cultural activities like calligraphy, like Shodo, as it is called. And I was lucky to take part in the traditional ceremonies of rice pounding ceremony, Mochisuki. And here I, I even visited to see a, a sumo match. And there were other international student associations in universities like UTSA offering various uh, cultural uh, celebrations like Diwali. And we also hosted samosa party in the university. And uh, besides all this, I wish you all the young students all the best and eagerly looking forward to meet some of you soon. And uh, now I finish here and hand over to Ms. Thakur. Ms. Thakur, please. Thank you so much, Dheeraj. It was really an interesting presentation. You have provided an overall picture of how a student life looks like in a Japan. Uh, so now we'll uh, move on with the university presentations. Uh, as shown in the agenda slide, First, we have the Toyo University. Toyo University has an interesting history about its establishment, uh, which was around 130 years ago. It was first a private university in Japan to enroll female students in 1916. Currently, it is developing a global education under the banner of Toyo Global Diamonds uh, to become an Asian hub uh, university for global leaders. Now, more information about this will be given by Mr. Hori. Uh, over to you, Mr. Hori. Hello. Okay. Thank you very much. So let me share my screen here. Is everything okay? Is my um, slide uh, yes, yes, visible? Yes, yes, okay. Yes, okay. Yes, thank you. All right, so uh, let me start. Well, uh, good afternoon, everyone, uh, or good uh, good evening, or namaste, or are you born? Uh, my name is Ryosuke Hori from Toyo University's International Affairs Office. Well, uh, first of all, um, I'd like to thank um, staff in uh, University of Tokyo for organizing today's event. Well, um, anyway, so uh, we are at Toyo University. You know, uh, today's host is Tokyo University or University of Tokyo. But uh, there is another university um, called Tokyo University. So there are only three things that I want you to remember uh, from my presentation today. And the first one is our university name, right? And the second one is about our English programs. I mean, programs uh, offered in English. And the third one is our tuition uh, reduction um, package. So uh, the first one is, you know, the university name. So if you, you know, repeat our university name, Toyo in Tokyo, Toyo in Tokyo, maybe 20, 30 times, uh, that will be, um, that will stay in your long-term memory. So I recommend you to do that. All right, so let me uh, go to another slide here. So um, I hope you know where Japan is exactly. And our main campus is in Tokyo. By the way, the Olympic games are going on here in Tokyo. 
well, I have to say everything is done in the bubble. So it feels like, you know, nothing is going on. You know, it just Olympics are, you know, just going on somewhere remote. So it doesn't feel like, you know, uh, people are coming in and, you know, um, giving a very uh, excellent performances and so forth. It just feels like, you know, nothing is going on. But, you know, Tokyo is the capital of, of Japan. It's very exciting, international, busy city. And uh, I have to say, uh, it's one of the best places for uh, study abroad students. So Tokyo University has five different campuses in and around Tokyo area. And here are some pictures from our main campus. Uh, even though it's in the center of Tokyo, uh, it's not 100% concrete and buildings. Uh, we have some trees, green, you know, uh, it's beautiful campus uh, from, from the above here. So Toyo University was founded about 130 years ago, and the student population is more than 31,000, which makes us one of the largest univers uh, private universities in Japan. And we get more than 100,000 applicants every year. Uh, so it's one of the uh, largest universities. And we are very uh, famous for uh, college sports. And here's a picture from our sumo team, you know, sumo, one of the um, uh, Japanese martial arts. So a little bit about academics. Uh, so Toyo University is a, a com comprehensive university. So we offer a lot of uh, different faculty programs, departments. So ranging from uh, faculty of letters, economics, business of administration, or science engineering, IT, or biology. So what we are missing is a medical school and our fine arts school. So if you're interested in you know, becoming a medical doctor or um, you know, doing some kind of, for example, drawings or sculpture, uh, Toyo may not be a good choice. The same thing goes for graduate programs. You know, a lot of programs are being offered here. And in 2014, uh, we were selected as one of the 37 top global universities in Japan. Uh, by this, uh, we have been receiving national grants for 10 years. And we are trying to promote or you know, um, in, uh, yeah, foster uh, internationalization, globalization within our university. So um, let me change the topic a little bit here. So when you consider study abroad, you know, or studying in Japan, uh, there may be some uh, many concerns that you have to, you, you might be faced. And probably we think these three are your, your major concerns, LMS. I'm not talking about the size of the French fries, you know, uh, but L stands for language. So for you guys, probably uh, learning Japanese is, you know, one of the difficult tasks uh, that you have to tackle. M stands for money. This is everybody's concern, not just for you, but for me, for everyone. S stands for safety. Nobody wants to study in a dangerous place. So safety is an important factor. So these three may be uh, the major concerns for you guys. So let me address our responses to each concern here. So first of all, language. So we offer 46 undergraduate programs and 18 uh, graduate programs here. And of those, uh, we offer three programs in undergraduate and nine programs in graduate uh, offered all in English. So you don't you really need to have any Japanese skills or knowledge at the time of your application. So everything is offered in English and you can complete all the coursework in English and the graduate. So that's our response to language issue and the money issue. This is the second thing that I said, you know, I want you to remember. So this is the, uh, the average tuition fees for uh, ordinary student at Toyo University. It's quite expensive, you know, it's, it's, it's much cheaper than US uh, universities, colleges probably, but still, you know, you can buy a decent car if you stay here for four years. 
And also living in Tokyo could be really expensive. Okay. I have to say, you know, I, I live in Tokyo. I still, you know, don't understand why housing could be that expensive and, and so forth. So to reduce uh, financial burden for international students, we offer partial tuition waiver uh, to all international students. So basically you get 30% tuition discount and that will apply to all international students. I say all, you know, as long as you have a student visa, uh, you will be eligible to get this, uh, this, to get this uh, financial aid. So for the first year, uh, it will be 30%. And from the second year and head, it will be 20 to 40% depending on GPA. So try to get you know, good grades, uh, good GPA, and, try and get 40% you know, discount. That, that's, uh, that will be ideal. So um, 40 per, I mean, 30% is it's quite big. So if you, if you can reduce 30%, um, probably uh, you will be able to pay uh, the, the, the yearly uh, rent. So that's a response for a money issue. And lastly, I want to uh, mention about the safety issue here. So, well, it's, it's a data from uh, two years ago, so it's not really um, up to date, but according to the Safe City Index 2019, Tokyo was ranked number one safest city in the world, okay? I'm not saying, you know, it's 100% uh, safe. You know, of course you have to choose where to go and when, but gen in general, Tokyo could, uh, is a safe city and it's a, a good place for international students to study in and live in. Well, that's our response to S. So I hope, well, you get a general idea of uh, who we are and what we offer. And probably uh, I, I hope you uh, saw some advantages uh, of studying in Tokyo. So let me change a, little, a topic a little bit here. So our employment rate in March, 2020 was 19.2%. This means that almost all students who are looking for a job actually got a job. However, you know, this is not very quite high uh, in, in terms of the Japanese university standard and uh, not all students uh, who are looking for a job actually got a job that they wanted. So, um, you know, many students may, may have to be, uh, you know, compromise. So it's not 100% inaccurate picture, but um, as long as you come to J J a Japanese university, uh, this, um, this kind of number is a kind of standard. So uh, don't worry too much about, you know, getting a job. So lastly, um, let me introduce admissions information a little bit here. So actually I'm representing uh, undergraduate pro side here. So um, my information would be uh, centered on the undergraduate programs. So we, uh, we offer um, April admission and September admission. So uh, you have two chances to apply. And for undergraduate April, 2020, um, we accept students to, uh, to coming to Faculty of Global and Regional Studies, which is about business slash uh, economics field, and Faculty of Information Networking for Innovation and Design. Uh, this is a computer science IT department. So uh, what we do is document screening and uh, web interview. So you don't have to come to Japan, okay, for, uh, for the exam. Now, uh, the, you, you, you can't really apply for the visa because of the coronavirus. So uh, you don't really have to, uh, you can't really um, come to Japan, unfortunately. So application documents, uh, this is just a list of uh, example documents. You, so you have to write an essay, why you want to study at Toyo, high school grades, um, graduation certificate, and uh, you have to have a certain score of IELTS, TOEFL, those kind of English language tests, and you have to upload the passport and so forth. 
So uh, when you apply, uh, so we have two, two times of application periods here. So the, the, the first one starts uh, in August, actually in three weeks or so. And the second one is in October. And there will be an interview in sep late September and late November. According to when you apply, I will, the dates will differ. And you will come to Japan late March next year. Hopefully by then, um, you know, entry restrictions will be lifted and the, um, you know, we can travel freely internationally. So anyway, um, now the, the detailed application guide is available on our uh, website. So you can just search on Google, you know, type Toyo admissions and probably the first site that you will find is our uh, admissions website. Then uh, please find our application guide. Then um, you know, go through uh, what you have to prepare and what you can study and so forth, okay? Well, if you have any questions, uh, you can always uh, email us. Our email address is mlglobal.toyo.jp. And uh, we, we have a Facebook page. However, uh, for some reason, for, you know, for some reasons, now it's uh, closed down. But um, in, in, may, in the near future, uh, it will be uh, reopened. So please, um, for now, please uh, get information from our university official website and um, email communication, please. Okay. So uh, that's all for from me. It's 13 minutes. Okay, good. So let me, uh, right. So um, it's Q&A time, right? Uh, yes. Um, thank you, Mr. Hori. Uh, okay. It was an interesting presentation. Uh, to Toyo in Tokyo is a catchy phrase. And now students also know that LMS does not stand just for price, but also the various aspects of Toyo University. So thank you again. Uh, now we can proceed with the Q&A session. Uh, would you like to choose some questions from the Q&A portal? Uh, probably it will be helpful if you could choose. Uh, yes, definitely. Yeah. Uh, so we have a student who is interested in robotics. Uh, do we have a robotic uh, and uh, a robotics field in the uh, Toyo University? Uh, yes, we do have a program that the program is offered in, all in Japanese. So you have to have a JOPT N2 level or above to apply for the program. Uh, okay. Yeah. Thank you. And uh, there is a student, uh, there's a postgraduate student in a biotechnology. So she would like to pursue P PhD in Japan mm -hmm. uh, in functional genomics. So uh, is there any, uh, uh, any uh, research lab or anything related to biotechnology in Toyo University? Yes, we do. I, I didn't really talk about graduate programs, but we do offer um, a biochemical, bio nanotechnology program here in English. So um, if, if you uh, visit our university website and search for bio nano program, uh, then uh, it, uh, it, will, it should be your interest. Um, yes. So uh, she also asked about various scholarship options. Uh, I, I think our panelists will be sharing the various scholarship options in the chat box very soon. So please uh, look out for them. Okay. And, uh, and what about MBA in Toyo University? Uh, do we have an MBA in Toyo University? Yes, we do. We do have an MBA in English. Also, sorry, I didn't really talk about graduate programs. So uh, just search, you know, Toyo MBA, then yes. you should be able to get information. Sorry yes. for it. Um, uh, so there is an undergraduate uh, science student, so he wants to pursue medical medicine in Japan. Uh, uh, is it is there any requirement of uh, Japanese JLPT language for that? Um, yes. Uh, first of all, we we don't have a medical school, so we don't have a program in medicine, unfortunately. But uh, we but we do have a biotechnology, bio you know applied biology program and that's uh, in, in Japanese. So uh, basically you have to have JLPT N2 or above to apply or uh, you take the EJU, you know, examination for um, Japanese university entrance. Okay. 
yeah yes yes so uh, there is a student who asked about what entrance is in uh, what entrance exams he has to take to uh, get into toyo university hmm. for the undergraduate program okay so it depends on how you uh, apply what kind of uh, exam you're applying so if you are applying from your country and uh, without coming to japan then um uh, you, it should be online system there should be online system and I just search Toyo admissions and you, you will be able to see in, uh, the information from the application guide. But uh, if you are pursuing, you know, coming to Japan and take the exam at, at, on our campus, uh, that's a different story. So um, you have to look for a Japanese um, site of our website, you know, in Japanese. Uh, so it depends. Yeah. Yes, thank you, Mr. Hori. And uh, there is a student who wants to know if there are any exchange programs in Toyo University. Uh, course, yes. yes, we do have uh, many uh, international exchange students coming in. Uh, unfortunately, coronavirus now, it's all stopped. But uh, we usually accept students from our partner universities. And sorry, it's my mistake. I shouldn't, I should have, I, I didn't check um, you know, partner schools in India and Sri Lanka or, you know, South uh, Asia. So um, please look for our um, partnership, the list of part our partner schools. And if you can find your, uh, your school name, yeah, you should, you're lucky, you can come. Mm, yes. And uh, there's one more student who wants to know if there is an art course in Toyo University. Unfortunately, we don't, we don't. We yeah, should, so we don't. Uh, so some of them are about the postgraduate uh, question. So I think maybe uh, if you can share the links in the chat box so students can uh, refer to them. Okay, yeah. Uh, well, the, the easiest way is to give us or uh, give us an email. So um, I just uh, share the, uh, my email address. So if you have any questions or concerns or you know, anything, please feel free to contact us. Yes, uh, there is another question where a student asks if it is compulsory to have IELTS if we if we know Japanese already. Is IELTS or TOEFL a compulsory exam? Well, uh, if you are looking for interested in uh, getting into the English offered English medium programs, yes, IELTS or TOEFL is mandatory. Okay. And uh, do you have any idea about the acceptance rate at Toyo University? Well, it, it also depends on what kind of exam you're taking, but um, the, the system that I just uh, introduced today uh, for undergraduate program, you know, international application, that's about, I would say 30%, 40% acceptance rate. Yes. Uh, so thank you, uh, Mr. Hori. I think you can answer the rest of the questions uh, when the others are presenting. Yeah, sure. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you very much, everyone. Have a nice uh, afternoon. Thank you. So uh, that was an interesting presentation about the Toyo University. Uh, now let's proceed to the next university. Uh, we have Ritsumekan. Ritsumekan Asia Pacific University. Ms. Deepthi Singh is an Indian represent is a India representative of the university. So uh, I invite uh, Ms. Deepthi to uh, share about the university. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Ms. Thakur, for the introduction. Hello, everyone. I am Deepti. I'm an alum of Ritsubikan Asia Pacific University, and currently I support students who, uh, who want to pursue higher education at APU. Uh, I hope everyone can see the presentation. So um, we are called Ritsubikan Asia Pacific University, more popularly known as APU. The picture that you see here, this is our campus, and uh, we were established in the year 2000 uh, with the aim of uh, establishing a university for multicultural learning. And uh, what I mean by multicultural learning, you will understand more when I talk about APU by its numbers. Uh, so we have 
50% of our student body is international. So they come from 90 different countries and the rest 50% is native Japanese. And similarly, our faculty also, our professors, they come from 21 different countries uh, with varied specializations. And um, they, uh, the other 50% are native Japanese. So in these 20 years, now we have alumni in 159 different countries. So it's a very multicultural, very uh, vibrant campus that you can imagine. Uh, talking about our rankings, so according to the Times World Rankings, we are 22nd if we are talking about all the universities out of 800 universities, that is. Uh, in private universities, we are fifth out of uh, 640 universities, and we have climbed these charts so fast in the past 20 years. Um, about the location of APU, we are uh, located in the southernmost largest island of Japan. So this is Japan and this red dot that you see on the screen, this is APU. Uh, we are in Oita prefecture and uh, uh, as is the case with Kyushu, it's, it, has a, uh, it doesn't get severely cold unlike a few areas up in the north, northern Japan. So it's mostly pleasant uh, except for a couple of months when it gets uh, colder than usual for Indians maybe. Um, Abepu, uh, it's a mid-sized town uh, with about um, 120,000 people population. It's a popular destination for uh, locals for hot springs. There are about 2,000 hot springs and um, it's a very, it's unlike of Tokyo and Kyoto city. It's um, more cozy and uh, small in size. Uh, most of the people know each other. And with EPU being there, you know, it has become very multicultural again. Many of our graduates are still living in the city. Uh, that makes it very unique. Um, and it's a very safe city. Um, even for girls, anybody can step out any time of the day or night and it, they will be completely secure. Okay, now coming to our courses, uh, we have two colleges. One is College of International Management. Um, here the degree is called a Bachelor of Business Administration. It's a four year course. Uh, a student can specialize in either of the following. They can uh, specialize in account accounting and finance, strategic management and organization, marketing or innovation and economics. Uh, we are uh, AACSB accredited, which essentially means that um, we are in the top 5% of uh, uh, business colleges in the whole world. Uh, the other business colleges which are AACSB accredited are uh, Stanford, Harvard, and the, these are the names you would uh, probably be more familiar with. Um, so I want to highlight that uh, when you apply to APU, you do not need any prior knowledge of Japanese or these subjects. Uh, we do not have any mandatory uh, subjects. So it's not necessary for you to know the basics of accounting and finance when you enroll into our College of uh, Management. Uh, we offer foundation courses in the first year so, um, so that you get a hang of the basics. And you can choose these specializations later on. You need not choose them when you apply. Uh, in fact, uh, you're free to choose them based on your interest as you develop it while studying. And uh, by the end of third year also, you can uh, finalize what your major is going to be. Uh, the other college that we have is College of Asia Pacific Studies. Uh, here the degree is called Bachelor of Social Sciences. It's again a four year course and uh, one can specialize in environment and development, uh, social, uh, culture, society and media, hospitality and tourism or international relations and peace studies. Uh, yeah, so we hold a lot of field trips um, there are a lot of conferences, business case competitions on our campus. So both the colleges, I would say, uh, the learning is not limited to just classroom. Uh, there are enough opportunities for a student to really uh, go out there and uh, test their knowledge, whatever they have learned on field as well. 
about the language education in APU, uh, I think this is one of the factors that makes us really unique. Uh, so we offered Japanese language classes to all our international students. It's mandatory, it's part of the curriculum, at least for, a, for one year, a student has to go, uh, go through uh, Japanese classes initially. And uh, similarly, our uh, Japanese basis students, native Japanese students, they have to take English classes. So it makes uh, you know our graduates, all our graduates, bilingual and multilingual in many cases. Uh, we also have other uh, languages on offer, such as Chinese, Indonesian, Korean, Spanish, Thai, and Vietnamese on our campus. Um, so, you know, it's a very, as I said, multicultural environment. It always helps if you know uh, more languages. Um, yeah. Uh, talking about the living arrangements now. Uh, so our campus uh, has uh, a dormitory for undergraduate students. Um, and uh, it is a 10 minute walk from our classrooms, very conveniently located. All our rooms are fully furnished and um, they are uh, all the amenities that you can think of, they are all provided for. So um, they're single rooms, they are shared rooms. Um, so students initially in the first year, they do not really have to worry about uh, where to stay and um, they don't have to worry about the living arrangements. Uh, second year onwards, students have the um, freedom to move out if they want. They can start living with their friends downtown. Um, they can share an apartment together and that makes it economic also. They're, most of the students choose to do that. Um, our campus, uh, I've said it enough, but we also have, we have, it's really vibrant and multi cultural, there are activities happening all year round. Uh, we also have a lot of uh, organizations, student circles, sports, culture, arts, academic circles, so that uh, really engages uh, all the students throughout the year. Yeah. Um, yeah, now about our fee structure and scholarship opportunities. So if you offer tuition reduction scholarships ranging from 30% to 100%, these are pre-enrollment scholarships. They are, uh, which means they are offered um, uh, even before, um, along with your enrollment, even before you pay for your admission fee, etc. you will get to know which tuition reduction scholarship uh, you have received. And based on um, based on the tuition reduction scholarship that you receive, you can uh, further decide whether it suits your financial plan or not. Um, uh, while this is a pre-enrollment scholarship, there are other scholarships which are available for living expenses, and uh, they're post-enrollment, which means uh, you will be able to apply for them and receive them only after enrollment. Uh, I have to take. Uh, up an example uh, of your uh, cost of attendance um, given the kind of tuition reduction scholarship you are offered. So here you can see um, in this uh, chart, you can see based on your tuition reduction, uh, the fees is listed here. So let's take an example. You apply to AP when you're offered 80% tuition scholarship. In that case, per annum fee, that um, uh, comes out is about uh, 1.8 uh, lakh rupees INR. This is an INR. So 1.8 lakh rupees is what uh, your fees will be per annum. And along with that, they will be living expenses, which are your accommodation, food, transport, utilities, etc. So all that um, comes out here, it is written as uh, approximately 7 lakhs. Uh, but I want to tell you that it hugely varies on your lifestyle. Um, so this figure is if you are eating out mostly and not um, cooking your meals by yourself and so it usually depends. So I would say that it varies between five lakh to seven lakhs, depending on your lifestyle. So um, tuition and uh, your cost of living together uh, for one year will be approximately 11 and a half lakh. All right, so what after graduation? So um, we have a career office. We have a dedicated career, career office that supports our uh, graduates with job placements. 
uh, our job placement rate is really high. It is uh, about 96%. Uh, every year we have about 200 plus companies that come on our campus um, to recruit students. And um, for Indian students, uh, the placement rate uh, that has been reported is 66% because um, many of them are not looking for jobs necessarily in Japan. Um, and I want to highlight that, you know, living in such a multicultural and um, amongst different nationalities, it has, it usually uh, inculcates different unique skill set amongst our graduates, uh, such as cultural intelligence, language skills, and global perspective, which are uh, highly sought after in the job market. Uh, so here are some of the major employers who regularly come to our campus. Uh, so some names here that you see are uh, Japanese companies such as Sony, Nissan, Panasonic, Nissan, uh, while others are more international companies um, uh, like Apple, Bloomberg, and uh, Google. Um, so ad the advantage of uh, studying in Japan, uh, I would say, is that uh, most of the Japanese companies are global. And uh, if you at all choose to come back to your home country, and uh, if you're from India, especially I'm talking uh, about Indians, if they come back to India and they want to work here, uh, then also there are plenty of uh, companies that are uh, Japanese and they have offices in India. So you will always find an opportunity here. Uh, some of the graduate schools where uh, our graduates go for higher uh, education are University of Oxford, University of Tokyo, Waseda University, some of the really known names. All right, so now uh, talking about our application schedule. So we have uh, two enrollments in a year. One is spring enrollment and the other one is in fall. Uh, spring enrollment, which uh, April 2022 enrollment, that is, uh, that is still open. So we are accepting applications since June 1 and it will be open till uh, October 13th. Uh, for the fall enrollment, most of the students who are who got their results today from CBSE um, and they are interested in undergraduate uh, education at APU, we will open uh, applications for them uh, in October. Uh, so October 4 to October 27th, and uh, it, there will be two phases, and the second phase will be from March 21st to April 13th. Um, so applications are all online, uh, so you need to, uh, you can either scan this QR code, we will be sending this presentation uh, after the webinar, you can either scan this code and you will land on our application uh, page. You can download this uh, application handbook and go through it. It has a step-by-step -step procedure and it's very easy to follow. Uh, <clears throat> so our application has two stages. Uh, one is the document uh, screening and an online online assessment test. Uh, the document screening, um, yeah. So I will link cover which documents are required. And uh, the stage two, if you clear the stage one, then the stage two is an interview, which will be about fifteen to twenty minutes. Uh, so the stage one, as I said, has an online assessment test as well. Here are the details of that test. So there will be a recorded video interview of five minutes. Uh, the questions will pop on your screen and you just have to answer those. Um, there is a critical thinking uh, test. These sample tests are available um, on the web also if you're interested in attempting some sample papers. Uh, then there is a core abilities assessment test, which is about 20 minutes. So uh, together, these this is about an hour um, of uh, online assessment. And this is stage one, along with your documents. And stage two is an interview, as I said. Um, yeah, if for more details uh, on our application, you can always uh, contact me if you're living in Delhi or uh, near Delhi. Uh, I can be reached on this number. Here's my mobile number and my email. And uh, if you're anywhere uh, outside of Delhi NCR, Ishana is, Miss um, Ishana is approachable on this number. And uh, this is her email ID. 
yeah so this is all we have for our presentation but before we end uh, i would like to show you a brief uh, video of our university yeah Hey guys, this is 2018 Spring Entrance Ceremony and I'm Saad. And I'm Ruth from APU Student Social Media Unit. And today we're on a mission. Saad, what's the mission? Our mission is to make friends from as many countries as we can. And this semester we have students from 38 different countries joining us here at APU. So let's wait no more and meet them. Let's go. My name is Vivek Yoki and I'm from Nepal. My name is Prodhan and I'm from Nepal as well. I'm from Rwanda, from Nigeria. From Sri Lanka, from Korea. I'm from Fiji. From Russia, from Canada. I'm Azerbaijan, from France, from Finland, but I study in Norway. From the USA, Germany, from Uganda. From Mongolia, from India. From Thailand, from Indonesia. <laughs> But it's also very like friendly, and you have everything you need in the like around you. you know, everyone is so friendly here, and uh, I've, so far I've found so many good people, so many friends. We're a family here. We're a family Thank here. It's great. It's pretty amazing. Um, it's very different from home, but you really start to enjoy the culture. First of all, would be the culture, I guess. People are really nice over here. For me, it's also the same culture, and I really wanted to learn like time management, business ethics from Japanese people. I like to uh, engage with Japanese culture much more uh, in APU. Like, I want to engage with the locals, not uh, not just international students. I want to engage with local cuisine, like local traditions, tea ceremonies, and etc. It's so beautiful. It's beautiful. I love it here. I, I feel like at home. I don't see the like homesick. I don't. Oh, no. yeah. Yeah. yeah, me too. I feel like I'm at home. <laughs> Everybody's so friendly. Everybody's so just lovely. Everything is lovely in Japan right now. Well, it's a very multicultural community, so I aim to get a lot of friends here <laughs> and make good relationships with people. I'm looking forward to all many women and to learn new things from it. So that brings us to the end of today's ceremony. We hope you had a great time as we did. And congratulations to all the new students. And wish you all the best for your future. Now all that's left to say is... Till next, next time. time. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, everyone. So, Q&A time, right? Yes, uh, thank you, Ms. Deepthi. It was a very comprehensive presentation, including uh, the uh, various programs being offered, the tuition fees, scholarships. You have covered everything about the AP University. Uh, it was a very informative uh, presentation. Uh, so let's proceed with the uh, Q&A session. Uh, would you like to pick some questions? Uh, do you want me to choose some questions? Uh, you can choose two because I don't know where it starts for APU. Yes, yes, yes. Um, um, okay, there is a student uh, who wants to know if there is a BBA program, bachelor's and MBA, uh, bachelor, I mean, BBA bachelor's and business administrative program in APU. Oh, yes, there is. I shared the detail, but I will do once again. So here are the details. Can you... Uh, all right, so this, these are the details of our uh, BBA program. So you can specialize in either of the following. It's a four-year course. 
uh, and it's highly accredited. I spoke a little bit about uh, its accreditation, AACSB. So uh, for more queries, you can always be in touch with me. I will leave my contact details in the chat box. Um, yes. Uh, and there's another question which asks the GRE requirements to get admission in APO. GRE, we, it's not required, although um, if you have appeared for it and the grades are good, it is definitely a plus in your application. Okay. Um, um, there are... Uh, so, can you uh, brief about uh, scholarships once again? Uh, are there any scholarships for bachelor students? Oh, yes, yes, absolutely. So, okay, going through it uh, once more briefly. Uh, okay, so uh, when you apply to APU, you will be awarded, as an international student, you will be awarded an APU tuition reduction scholarship, uh, which means, um, you know, if I have to put it in simpler words, they will be, uh, it, will, it can range anything between 30% to 100%. Uh, you know, your tuition will be off and uh, then it can look something like this. So depending on the tuition waiver you receive, uh, your tuition, uh, tuition fee that you are supposed to pay to APU varies. Um, and this is, um, the, you will get to know about this tuition waiver before you pay your admission fee. So you can decide based on uh, which tuition reduction scholarship you receive, you can choose to whether or not enroll in APU. And um, how much tuition reduction you get, it depends on your scholarship, uh, sorry, it depends on your application, uh, how you perform in your assessment test, how your documents look like, your transcripts. And uh, it also depends on the interview, which is a second stage to enrollment. And uh, there are other private scholarships also, um, which are available post enrollment. Um, there are many details that I can share with you. Please get in touch with me so I can share some examples of private scholarships, uh, which are available on monthly basis also, which will help with your uh, accommodation cost, your living expenses. Thank you, Ms. Deepti, for once again telling this. And uh, there's a student who wants to know if uh, having a work experience is compulsory to uh, get admission into an MBA. Oh, yes. We, it's, uh, we need three years of work experience minimum. Uh, but uh, that is... Uh, by the time you enroll. So if let's say you are planning to enroll for next year fall, uh, then you can complete three years of work experience by that time. So you can start your application now. Okay. Uh, so uh, is there any masters in political science and international history in APU? Uh, not particularly in these subjects, but uh, in liberal arts, we have masters right uh, so similar college of asia pacific studies we have in liberal arts uh, we do have a master's program also um, okay so uh, what about uh, courses in medicine are there uh, courses in medicine in apu no unfortunately we do not have medicine we just have two colleges we are a very small and niche university so we just have two colleges one is uh, College of Asia Pacific Studies, and the other one is uh, BBA program, International Management. Uh, what exam should a, uh, a student has to give to enter APU? Uh, I so there are no particular exams that you have to give other than the assessment test that I spoke about. I will just quickly open that slide. Um, here are the assessment tests that you have to appear for. Uh, there is one critical thinking test, which is a 30 minute test. Another is portability. So, um, you know, these are tests that you need not prepare in advance for. Honestly, these uh, assess your um, comprehension abilities. Uh, but uh, apart from these, if you have appeared for uh, IELTS, if you have appeared for JLPT, if you have appeared for SAT, they are always, uh, you know, an added advantage in your application. 
Yes, uh, I find some questions regarding postdoc uh, position. So, do you have any idea about it? Postdoc? Sorry. Yes, yes, yes postdoc. Position. Yeah, position as in um, uh, for jobs or? Uh, no, postdoc positions in labs. I think, I mean, these were labs. labs. Okay. Yes, uh -huh. yes. Um, no, and for, you know, uh, for doctorate and uh, postdoc questions, I think they are best if they are directed to the university uh, because they can only be answered by their respective guides. Uh, so yeah, so I will leave our university's um, email ID. You can write to them directly. Uh, yes, I agree with you, Miss Ritti. So the postdoc positions are usually very lab and department specific. So uh, you need to directly contact the professors. Exactly, yes. Um, uh, so is there any masters in robotics course? No, 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 no robotics, sorry. Uh, and the student wants to know how intensive is the Japanese course? I mean, by the time he graduates, uh, what level at what level of Japanese language uh, he is at? Sure, sure. So uh, it I would say it entirely depends on you. <laughs> so one year is what we say is mandatory for all international students to study. But uh, having said that, we have other courses like business Japanese for advanced students also. So if you're interested, if you want to pursue uh, Japanese studies, uh, language studies further, you can enroll for those courses also. So um, I have seen from my personal experience when I was there, I went as a student to APU, uh, not having any knowledge in Japanese. And um, I was able to get into in uh, one and a half years of study. So it totally depends on you, I would say, you know, it's very uh, subjective. Uh, yes, I think all the questions mm -hmm. are already answered in the presentation. So uh, this presentation, these videos will be shared on the Utokyo uh, website. Uh, you can refer it. So this brings us to the end of the presentation of uh, AP University. Thank you once again, Ms. Deepti. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Uh, so let's proceed with the next university. Uh, uh, we have Kanazawa University. I need not say especially about this. It is one of the top national mm -hmm. universities. Uh, we are joined by Mr. Uh, by Professor Yamamoto uh, from the Organization of Global Affairs and uh, who will be presenting about Kanazawa University. And we also have Mr. Swapnil Suryavanchi who will share his experiences in the university. And uh, here I would like to specially mention about Ms. Uh, Takashima for uh, uh, answering the questions. Uh, so please shoot your answers in the Q and A portal. Uh, over to you, Miss uh, Professor Yamamoto. Uh, Ms. Dako, thank you very much for your kind introduction. Hello, everyone. I would like to thank you for giving us this opportunity today. I would like to thank everyone involved. Uh, my name is Yamamoto. I'm mainly in charge of education for international students at Kanazawa University. I will now introduce Kanazawa University to you. Uh, first of all, please watch the video of my colleague, Professor Matsuda, introducing Kanazawa University at the fair last week. Uh, second, our students from India uh, will share his experience with you. And lastly, our staff, Ms. Takashima, will introduce our virtual recruiting system. If you have any questions about admission to Kanazawa University or about Kanazawa University, Please write them in the chat box. Now, Ms. Takashima, please start the video. Hello, everyone. I'm very happy to present you a brief overview and up-to-date information of Kanazawa City and Kanazawa University. I am Matsuda Makiko, and I'm a professor at Kanazawa University. My major is Applied Linguistics and I'm currently teaching Japanese language and culture to international students. I'm also an, an alumni of Kanazawa University. When I was a university student, I have been to India to study Sanskrit. So for me, India is my second home, like this. Let me introduce Kanazawa City before introducing Kanazawa University, because you may not be familiar with cities in Japan. 
The city of Kanazawa, the home of Kanazawa University, is located in the heart of Japan. It takes only two and a half hours by Super Express from Tokyo and around two hours from Kyoto. So you can enjoy living in Kanazawa, shopping in Tokyo, and sightseeing in Kyoto. This is Kanazawa Castle. The building you can see in the photo, a gate of Kanazawa Castle. In April, cherry blossoms are very beautiful here. Originally, Kanazawa University campus was located within the wall of Kanazawa Castle, and I have studied here there. So you can enjoy a big festival held in Kanazawa in June. For those of you living in hot South Asia, snow may be very attractive. If you want to enjoy the deep snow, Kanazawa is a great place to visit. There are various ski resorts and snowy mountains within an hour's drive. So when you look at the pictures, it seems like time has stopped since the Edo period. But Kanazawa is not just a city of because these historical zones. Of course, Kanazawa also has urban zones with buildings over 30 stories high. And there are many restaurants, including Indian food, Sri Lankan food, Nepali, and Pakistan. I leave you with the introduction of the town and move on to the introduction of Kanazawa University. Let me show you the facts first. So, Kanazawa University is a national university and fourth largest campus in Japan. And we have 17 schools and seven graduate schools. English medium instruction for graduate school and some undergraduate school. Number of students is more than 10,000. And 2020 fiscal year budget is something like that. And general citation ranking is 18th in Japan and scholarship offered by Kanazawa University. International students more than 600. Enrollment includes students from 43 countries and number of staff and around 3,000. This is the picture of the main campus. At the end of the 20th century, this main campus was moved to the mountainside of Kakuma. The picture on the left is the campus in spring, and the picture on the right is the campus in winter. Then let me share with you some information about today's Kanazawa University. As I mentioned before, so about 10,000 students are enrolled at our beautiful and green campus. You can see the details on this slide. And we place special importance on these four activities, education, research, internationalization, and contribution. The term of education, we have established the Kanazawa University Global Standard, our effort to train the core leaders of the global society. We educate students the necessary skills encourage them to be physically healthy and strong and nurture their human resilience. Specific efforts include the KUGS academic program where we collected general education into 30 unique courses. Also, we have set up the Institute of Liberal Arts and Science to promote core education in undergraduate and graduate courses. Now, let me introduce our undergraduate course. Our undergraduate education comprises of colleges and schools as shown on this slide. So that, that is, so first one is philosophy in interdisciplinary sciences and human and social sciences, science and engineering, and medical, pharmaceutical, and health sciences. And the College of Philosophy in Interdisciplinary Sciences that is established in this year, 2021, will be the first college in Japan to educate experts in transdisciplinary sciences with knowledge on ICT, AI, IoT, and big data. The College of Human and Social Sciences explores humankind and its society. And we have School of Humanities, Law, Economics, teacher education, regional development studies, and international studies. The next college is science and engineering. So we have the so School of Mathematics and Physics, Chemistry, Mechanical Engineering, Frontier Engineering, Electrical Information Communication Engineering. 
and geosciences and civil engineering, bio, biological science and technology. The third one is medical, pharmaceutical, and health sciences college. We have four schools. This is School of Medicine, Pharmacy, Pharmaceutical Sciences, and Health Sciences. The last college is Philosophy in Interdisciplinary Sciences. So this college is brand new, so just established this April. It will educate students in the following three aspects. Innovation in society, tourism science, and human augmentation. There are now two schools in this college. So one is a school for the future of innovation in society, and the other one is a school of tourism science and design. So this tourism science, tourism science and design will be established in next April. So if you are thinking of so entering a university in the undergraduate course, I strongly recommend you to study here, the School for the Future of Innovation in Society, because it is an English medium instruction. So English is available. You don't need to study Japanese to enter the university. So the so expected profession after graduation, the manager, director, or administrator in various industries and governmental organizations, or global staff in international organizations like UN, um, or entrepreneur in new fields, director or R&D. And so the new school of tourism science and design will be established in next April. So data. So in school of tourism and science and design, you can study like so data science in tourism or sustainable tourism or wellness tourism and destination design and so on. We inform you about the so English medium instruction in Canada University. Well, that is so the school for the future of innovation in society and school of tourism science and design. So the that that one will be established in next April, and also so in division of international studies, so English is available. So let's move on to the graduate school. So these are the graduate schools and the United Graduate School at Kanazawa University. So these are so graduate schools we offer you. So we have so human and social environmental studies and natural science and technology, medical sciences, advanced preventive medical sciences, frontier science in initiative. This slide shows the number of graduates from the Canada University in the master's program. So as you see in this slide, so we have more than 20,000 master. And as for PhD, the doctor degree, we have around 5,000 doctor. So we have many experiences for training doctor program. I will introduce a little more about Canada University. So now we have around 600 international students from 38 countries. And we have around 20 students from South Asia, especially from Bangladesh. We have 70 students from Bangladesh and three students from India and three students from uh, Sri Lanka and one student from Pakistan. So we have three dormitories, uh, Sakigake, Hokumei, and KU International House for international students. And Sakigake, Okumei uh, so share house, so you can enjoy living with Japanese students. And the rent varies according to each housing by size, location, and the approximate total living cost is around 80,000 um, or 100,000 yen per month. So as for advising system, another university has a tutor system. All international students will be supported by a tutor for one year. And also we have an advising system for career uh, development. 
but we have career education program and internship program. So, so you can take business Japanese language training or career education program and internship opportunities. So if you want to get a job in Japan, we support you. So now it's your turn. Come and study in Kanazawa, Japan. See you. Thank you, Mr. Imamoto, for the uh, nice presentation. It was very comprehensive. And I especially like the fact that uh, having a mentor for one year. This uh, this policy is almost uh, in all the universities because it is uh, uh, students need not worry that we do not know Japanese. Now, uh, moving to another country is a very big thing, but a student will be allocated to take care of you for almost a year. So. Uh, thank you again for your presentation. And uh, uh, if you would uh, like Mr. Swapnil to have his presentation, he can proceed. Uh, yeah, is the screen visible? Yes. Uh, yes, it is. Uh, yeah, okay, thank you. Uh, okay, so a very good evening to everyone. Uh, my name is Swapnil. I'm from Kanazawa University. I'm a master's student. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank the uh, University, University of Tokyo India office for this opportunity and all the participants for joining this webinar and Kanazawa University. So I will briefly uh, share my experience, uh, uh, the two-year experience which I uh, had in Kanazawa University. So. I'm from Maharashtra, India. Uh, I did my civil engineering from India. And in 2019, I came to Kanazawa University for the master's program in environmental engineering. I belong to Graduate School of Natural Science and Technology, Division of Environmental Design. So first of all, I would like to begin with why I chose Kanazawa University. So in my undergraduate, I got the opportunity to collaborate with uh, my professor for the research project through which I got to know about Kanazawa University and, and thus I applied for the master program. But the main reason I would like to say that the location of Kanazawa is as already addressed by Professor Matsuda. It's like a perfect amalgamation of modern Japan and old culture. And secondly, I would like to point out is the research facilities, experience faculties, and cutting edge research facilities. I think everywhere in Japan, we have the cutting edge research facilities, which is Japan known for. And thirdly is the scholarship and research grants. So as you all know, Kanazawa University is a national university and uh, it has two campuses divided in Kakuma and Takaramachi. So as I told you the education, uh, the one specific thing about Kanazawa University is that we have the Nano Life Science Institute, uh, which is a world premier institute, which is exclusive to Kanazawa University, which focuses on nanoscience and human uh, biological research. And third is, second point I would like to point out is the Cancer Research Institute, uh, which is uh, based on the cancer research, uh, focusing on the research for preventing and uh, can cancer diseases. And thirdly is, uh, as already told by Professor Matsuda, the College of uh, Philosophy, which is a newly established one. And lastly, for especially for international students, uh, we have various job hunting uh, facilities, and also uh, we have various uh, internship, international internship programs. So I will talk about uh, quickly about the Graduate School of Natural Science and Technology. We have six division inside it, uh, mathematical and physical sciences, electrical and computer sciences, material chemistry, environmental design, natural system, and mechanical science. So I belong to environmental de design, but uh, the one thing I would like to say is like, you have lots of plethora of opportunities where you get to have uh, interdisciplinary research in when it comes to your graduate studies. So the masters will be more focused on research oriented. Uh, second, I would like to talk about the scholarship. So as you all know, MEX scholarship is the best scholarship among all, but Kanazawa University has other scholarship, private scholarship as well. As you can see some of them I've mentioned here, but also you can go through the website, which will be later shared on the chat box. So 
I would like to quickly speak about the life at Kanazawa University. So when I came two years back in 2019, just before COVID hit, uh, I was lucky enough to experience uh, whatever time I had, like three, four, uh, three, six month period around in Kanazawa, uh, where I got to enjoy all the delicacies, the foods and uh, the view of Ishikawa Prefecture. So life at campus already, as, as an international student, you need to take uh, compulsory mandatory Japanese classes for the first semester. And you can also, then you need to take the necessary lectures respective of the courses you're taking. And also you can uh, uh, get, you get the opportunity to join different clubs uh, along with the Japanese students. Uh, and as far as my first year was concerned, I was assigned a tutor, which was really helpful because I was not knowing any Japanese that, uh, but that tutor really helped uh, getting accustomed to the daily life in Japan. Then I would like to talk about the monthly expenses uh, as Kanazawa is not that much of a big city, but it's not a small city. So the expenses are less compared to the uh, other cities. So the uh, all in all the total expenses in Indian rupees, I would say like, uh, around 80 to 70,000 uh, Indian rupees. I think that would be uh, the cheap if compared to Tokyo and other cities. Uh, and the search work, these are some of the, yeah. And second, lastly, I would like to talk about the International Student Committee that we have in Kanazawa University for Graduate School of Natural Science and the Humanities Division. So we have a, ever-growing international community in Kanazawa University, uh, where we help all the international students uh, to get adjusted to the life in Kanazawa and to have a cross-cultural experience with Japanese students. And uh, also we have newly established KU SGU tandem program, where we get the opportunity to get one-on-one -on -one, uh, language session with the uh, Japanese coordinator system where one Japanese student is assigned for each international student to get to learn the language. Yeah, as I talked about international student committee, uh, we have various events like open houses, uh, food festival, and all various trips like ski trip as Kanazawa is famous for its winter. So I would definitely recommend everyone to enjoy the winter here in Kanazawa. Mm, and the Kanazawa Cultural Exchange Program. Yeah, so thank you. I will last day I would like to conclude with like whatever time I have spent at Kanazawa, it was wonderful. And uh, I would like to uh, say that if, if you're planning to come to Kanazawa, it will be a wonderful experience that will you will remember throughout your life. Thank you. Thank you, Swapnil. It was really interesting to know a student's point of view and for having and for giving us an insight into your life. Uh, I'm sure students are motivated to uh, to uh, look into Kansawa University. So uh, now we can proceed with the Q and A session. Um, would you like to answer a few questions, Professor Yamamoto? Oh, thank you, Ms. Tako. We still have uh, one more information that I would like to share with you. Uh, yes, Takashima, yes. Takashima-san, onegai shimasu. Hi everyone, I'm staff from Kanazawa University. Today I will introduce the new online translation system uh, to be opened soon. Well, it is a system that you can uh, have chance to join the small, uh, small group translation with an school and ask anything about the university apart from him or her. So, uh, if you want to have information of the university when the system is opened, uh, please check the contact email address to be introduced on the next page. 
Uh, these are uh, contact team others and the department in charge. Uh, so uh, here are the ones who are interested in the system. Or if you want to ask anything about the university, uh, please contact us with the contact email others. Here, uh, thank you for listening. So I would like to hand it over to uh, Professor Yamamoto, who will be in charge of the question and answer session. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Takashima. Um. Thank you, uh, Professor Yamamoto, again, for sharing the new initiative. Um, okay, uh, shall we look into the Q&A portal? Okay. Um, uh, uh, first, uh, though Ms. Swapnil mentioned about the scholarship of Kanazawa University, many of you will probably want to know about detailed information. So let me introduce it to you in more detail. As for Kanazawa University's own scholarship, you can apply for it. Uh, although the amount is not so large, uh, several tens of thousands of yen per month. As a condition, you need to be a member of one of the partner universities uh, of Kanazawa University. But if you meet the conditions, you can receive the scholarship in principle. Uh, we have several partnership university in India, for example, Nalanda University, uh, Sabitrivo or Hu Pune University, uh, Tilak Maharashtra University. Uh, in Bangladesh, uh, the University of Dhaka and the University of Chittagon is our partnership university. And uh, also you can apply for private uh, scholarships. Uh, please check the URL I am about to send you for information on scholarships. Please take a look at in chat box. Uh, we will post it later. Uh, in addition, an exemption system in the case of uh, graduate schools, international students with uh, excellent academic records and exempted from paying full or half the tuition. In most years, about 80% um, of applicants receive a full or half exemption. If you would like to ask for more information, please check the URL. Uh, we will send you and contact us. Ms. Tako, it's about a scholarship. And maybe I'm looking at the chat box. Uh, yes. Mm. Uh, so uh, there is uh, another question about, uh, are there any programs in the Department of Forestry or maybe Environment? Uh, yes, we do have. Uh, so uh, <clears throat> you can use uh, this link to find the laboratory in which uh, you are measuring, for example, this. It's about the major of engineering. Um, Kanazawa University does not have any graduate schools related to architecture or agriculture, but except that we do have a lot of fields. So please take a look at this link and uh, maybe you will find the major that you want to study. Yes, uh, there's another question. Mm -hmm. uh, is it mandatory to have any English proficiency? to enter Kanazawa University? Uh, it depends on the field that you want to study. Uh, some fields, uh, you have to pass the kind of uh, English test like TOEIC or TOEFL, but as for uh, engineering field or natural science field, you don't need to um, take any a TOEIC or TOEFL. It depends on the field that you want to study. So uh, about more detailed information, uh, uh, it's the same. Please take a look at this link. We have uh, several fields, so it's so complicated. Yeah. Uh, so uh, there's another question which asks if, uh, if the medium of instruction is English for the uh, advanced medical science courses. Mm. Uh, about this question, uh, Mr. Swapnyu, how about, do you have any advice for that? Mm, well, I, 
I, I don't have any idea for medical sciences because it's in different campus. <laughs> yeah. But what I've heard from my friends, I think for undergraduate, it's in Japanese. But for graduate, I think it might be in English. But for undergraduate, it's in Japanese. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Swapmio. Actually, uh, at Kanazawa University, our goal is to make uh, 50% of undergraduate classes and 100% of graduate classes available in English. Uh, in the case of um, undergraduate courses, some classes are conducted in English, in English. So a certain level of Japanese proficiency, for example, at least N2 is recommended. Uh, in the case of graduate school, uh, Japanese language skills are required for the humanities about for engineering and medical graduate schools, uh, there are many international students enrolled and classes and labs are often conducted in English. So uh, please do not worry about that. Thank you, Professor. So uh, almost all of the questions uh, are related to if there is this course, uh, this particular course. And also I think those details, we can get those details from the uh, university website. Yes. Uh, right. uh, thank you once again for the uh, for answering the questions actively, and thank you, uh, Sapnil, uh, for being a part of this program. And so now this brings us to almost the uh, end of the presentation. I will share my agenda slide again. Uh, so, uh, thank you very much for attending today's webinar. Uh, today we have covered around three universities in Japan. Uh, they have explained in detail about uh, various aspects like uh, the beautiful campuses, the admission process, tuition fees and scholarships. Now, if you would like to know about uh, more programs and that are being offered in the universities, please uh, check out the U- uh, Utokyo India Office website and uh, do register for other webinars uh, where all the other universities will be covered. Uh, so thank you once again for attending today's webinar and you can uh, reach out to us through email and through the following website. Um, thank you once again.